Hey! <laughs> We're live! Fancy meeting you here. Hey, hey. Ben! Hey. Welcome! How are you going, hey. buddy? <laughs> oh, now let's figure out how the screen share thing works. <laughs> I think there's a, there, ah, so there, there's a button. It, either a button with a computer that's cross, or it's where you do screen share and it's currently off. Anyway. Nope. <laughs> I, I definitely got it. I am going to have to move one of these tabs, though. Technical setup. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, was any? We're amongst friends right now. Yeah, I'm glad we went to the uh, training session that we didn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been very handy. Well, we've got it. We're super good here. <laughs> you could say we're much good right now. Much good, are we? Much good. Much, much good. good. Much good. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> Hope you've been enjoying some speeches and roundtables. Give us a shout out if you're here and listening. You know. Oh, I think we're getting sound check. In intro, don't we? Oh no, we're not. Anyway. Oh, we're, we're not. I didn't think so. That would have been a. Oh. No, we're good. <laughs> Ben's doing face palms already. Seriously, Ben, the amount of face palms you've probably done from like talks you've watched me do over the years, like I'm surprised there's not a callus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yep. I'm definitely developing one. You should try working with him every day, Ben. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the face palm emoji is like one of the top emojis that gets suggested for me these days. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Uh, along with the, uh, you know, tear face one. <laughs> no, he does come up with some good ones. <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to design like a pun nose protector. So 3D printing. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a thing. Definitely an option. <laughs> you Had... nose, you need it. Uh, I wonder if I can mute. I'm the presenter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you can? I've got this presentation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's our uh, regional Victoria going, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're in step three tomorrow night. Ooh. Yeah, he's sadly not regional. Otherwise, he's we could like right. we could hang out. We could co-work at each other's places. <laughs> yeah, which Just is even more annoying. On the wrong side of the border, hey, Ben. <laughs> happens to the best of us these days. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm moving to Sunshine shortly, so we'll definitely have to catch up at some point. Maybe next year. 2021 sounds like a good year. <laughs> um, if it helps, when we get to go pick mail up on Saturday, the army at the checkpoint... That is still weird to say. Uh, checked our delivery to make sure that our old address and names were on it and our new address, like, wasn't on it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> weird times. Hmm. Says, no one else is in here yet, so it's fine. It says six watching now, though. So, but there's oh, really? no one else. It says, isn't it that six up the top? Isn't that what it means? Um, well, there's no, I think three. I can see three. There's three out of five. Presenting maybe, and then there's three with an eye icon. Ah, right. So, and hanging out. Yeah, That's pretty much. That's cool. why I was just like, yeah. Oh, we're due to start in a minute. <laughs> oh, we are recording though. So anyway. it is recording. Producers, when you see this, please uh, cut this bit out. <laughs> yes, we'll give a lead off. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. When should we start? Ah. Number of screens to videos. Five seconds. No. <laughs> can, you count, can you count us down, Ben? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> oh, is it today? Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. In that case, should we start? Mm -hmm. When you're ready. All right, well, welcome everyone. Before we begin, I'd like to uh, begin, well, begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and the lands that we meet today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. So I'm developer Ali um, and I'm joined here with developer Steve. We're developer advocates at IBM and we do some cool stuff, don't we, Steve? 
We do. Um, it's so amazing to be here. One of the things I've loved the most over the years, and like I've been coming to API Days since 2014. Can you believe? But seeing how much it's grown through the region and just the community that's grown around it is amazing. And to be part of that, like uh, as a sponsor and then speaking and I've emceed one time, like it's just amazing, like seeing these communities grow up. And yeah, I, at IBM, as part of the uh, developer advocate team, we've, um, we've proudly, you know, helping support a whole bunch of different meetups, conferences, hackathons. And one way we, we do, we've been doing that, and particularly with some of our call for code hackathons lately, is throughout one of our virtual venues. So if you are an organizer from a community group, we would love to talk to you and see how we can help, how we can be involved. And in particular, if you need a venue to run things, now that we're all online, um, we have these uh, great virtual venues. Ali, click again. This is one of my favorites. I've always wanted to run a hackathon in space, and this year we did. So that was kind of, well, we kind of did, anyway. <laughs> you could say it's Ali's world, Steve. You could say that. That is an amazing pun to use. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Sorry, it puns are... <laughs> Puns aside though, what are we talking about today? So today we're getting into cloud native, the wonderful world of cloud native, uh, cloud enabled development, containers, mm -hmm. Kubernetes and OpenShift and CICD or DevOps. What this talk what, is not. What it is not, it is definitely not an introduction to Kubernetes because we haven't got time for that. We'd, we'd love to talk about it. It is definitely not setting up and administering an OpenShift cluster. Again, more than happy to talk about. And it is certainly not a sales pitch, marketing pitch or cricket pitch. That's just not cricket, Steve. No, it's not. But we will have a ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so back to cloud native, we heart cloud native, love this picture. What is cloud native though? Um, so a cloud native applications are applications that are distributed in nature and they utilize cloud infrastructure, obviously. Um, so they usually utilize a Microsoft microservices architecture, um, which is a service orientated architecture in which apps are like decomposed into small, loosely coupled services by area of functionality. So you could kind of say that they're like the Lego blocks of a grand build. Um, these are usually packaged into containers um, and they can then play together nicely, but still be independent, um, well, containers. <laughs> so they really promote agility and continuous improvements. Um, and why uh, one is... thing I yep, go oh, ahead. I was gonna say one thing I really love, like I've designed um, and managed like heaps of APIs before. And one thing I really love about cloud native and in particular microservices underpinning that is that um, for APIs you can route into different projects, pods, uh, different infrastructure as you need to, which is really cool. And we're gonna look at that a little bit in this session, but is really cool, particularly from the compliance um, and PCI side of things, because you can have different different endpoints and even different API user types route to different resources, which is amazing. Exactly. So you can leverage the full API world um, with these packages, which is awesome. Um, so cloud native. Um, yeah. So uh, why is it cloud native important to API development? Scalable, flexible, agile. We've touched on some of these points already. Fully automatable, which is great because as a dev, like I really don't want to have to think about um, when I deploy things, if I'm going to have problems upstream. I, I just want to like work on my code base and be innovative. Like that's what I love to do. So, mm -hmm really enables that kind of development as well. Continuous innovation, also, you know, open source adoption and enables kind of the opportunity for a multi-cloud approach as well. So that'll give you greater reliability and availability, which is what everyone's after these days. So what are the key attributes of a cloud native application? I think we've touched on most of these. They're containers, microservices, centered around APIs for interaction and collaboration, um, deployed on a uh, cloud infrastructure, obviously, otherwise why well, call it cloud native, but yes, that's definitely a point. <laughs> um, and managed with agile DevOps. So instead of these traditional developer versus ops teams, you've kind of um, integrating those two, they're working together better. And they're automated capabilities. And as Steve said before, great governance and policy driven resource allocation. And special mention to that last slide too, because um, it's a bit meta when you're using this to also manage uh, API deployments, because that means you can get to use APIs to manage APIs. Hey, <laughs> I love that. Um, so key attributes of a microservices architecture. No, they're not services for ants. They are usually packaged um, into smaller um, items, so broken down into small services. If you have a large monolith of code, you can't find anything. You don't know where the errors are happening. These smaller ones enable you um, 
uh, are packaged, you know, for single function or business capability. Um, that means the teams can write the code and also deploy the code, um, and it's quite easy to do. So smart endpoints, dump pipes, decentralized government and decentralized data management, as Steve touched on before as well. Special mention to the, the model list there, like anyone that's dealt with um, modernizing a model list before. Wow, that was a tongue twister. Um, yeah. yeah, being able to break up the code, break up the services and have um, smaller groups of devs being able to work or large groups of devs still, but it sort of um, decentralizes that um, that single code repository, which is a big fan. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> totally. And in on your key kind of passion um, development industry as well, well not industry, uh, point as well. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. Microsoft Architecture promotes, and I think we've touched on a lot of these as well already, efficient teams because you've got smaller teams working on things um, they like and they've got end-to-end -end ownership of that. Um, so they can develop faster as well and whenever they like, they don't have to wait on anyone. Um, simplified deployment. As we've mentioned as well, right tools for the right job um, and improved application quality um, because service can be tested more thoroughly um, in isolation and you've got better code coverage, you can see those logs. Um, and scalability, which is a super important uh, factor for today's fast paced kind of innovative uh, tech landscape. Um, and special mention too there of scalability because that applies to all ends of the industry like something we definitely so it's a conversation we have a lot with uh, startups for example being able to build small for a minimal like user base but building with that big vision in mind so and the last thing you want to do particularly as a, a startup going to a scale up is needing to reinvent wheels or refactor the code as most developers love saying um, on the fly like while you're trying to build for that you're running infrastructure while people are using it because yeah that's that's never fun it is literally like trying to change a car engine while it's driving <laughs> yeah or retrofitting those old old um apis to work with the new ones it just yeah no <laughs> um, a bit so yeah it does uh, so containers provide this kind of process isolation um is what we're getting at so pretty mm -hmm. aren't they i love a good organized uh, repo and tech stack uh, so the I initial idea of containers was um, the ability to slice up an operating system. So Linux initially came up with this, um, that you can securely run on multiple applications without them interfering with one another. Um, actually, this oh, yep. Sorry, I was just going to jump in and say um, one thing. Actually, it's on that slide, um, and we didn't rehearse this, but um, one thing <laughs> that does come in really handy with uh, this sort of setup too is you can build sandboxes really, really quickly and be able to play um, and, and build chat. in the same environment that you're running production in. Yeah, that's really important actually. Like um, it's a standardized system. So the namespaces um, are used to, um, you know, accomplish that. So namespaces is, is also used in Kubernetes, which we're about to talk about. So containers are pretty cool. Um, what are the benefits of containers, Steve? Um, Oh, we just went through the ball. You know, one we thing did. I always wanted to do as a demo and totally going to work on this is um, having it deploying an app into containers. And we have more time today. I'd totally do this um, called excitement because then I can container my excitement. Aha. Uh, I can see um, the audience face palms coming out now. <laughs> so many groans. <laughs> Incidentally, if you do have a question, please drop it into the chat or come visit us on our on our booth in the exhibition hall. So. Definitely. We're always up for a bit of a geek out. So, yep. <laughs> Any questions, let us know as well. So, yeah, we've talked through the benefits of these. Um, and containers are, you know, originally Docker kind of coined the container term, but now um, Kubernetes is, is also known for its good container system. And that's what we're talking about here. And Kubernetes is awesome, but there's not a lot for developers. Um, so how do they have to work on all the config build the pipeline, CICD, how that essence automation. get on the container and yep, automation for tests and complex code. Uh, you have to build the ready-made uh, templates. Um, so to solve this, um, there's OpenShift, which is Kubernetes mm. for the developers. So you can kind of think of it like, uh, and you were mentioning a car analogy before, Kubernetes is like the engine, but I want to be able to drive that engine and I want it to be easy. So OpenShift is the car that allows that. And maybe you can expand on that 
Um, yeah, totally. And like we were saying with the projects, like you're able to, particularly with API deployments, and that's one of the things I absolutely love, is that you can route um, users and also APIs to, to particular endpoints. I mean, no different to you would do something similar in Nginx, for example, but this happens at the platform level. So you can route through to uh, specialized resources easier, quicker, um, even having those um, like redundancies in place so that, I mean, uh, forbid anything should go wrong, but if it does, you can have the resources you need in place to be able to deal with it. So it does add for a more flexible environment and special mention to multi-cloud, love multi-cloud and being able to, you know, not avoid that vendor lock-in that we absolutely totally. hate. <laughs> yeah, so the OpenShift core concept there, which I pretty much think you just described, Steve, did Oh, I did. I got a bit excited. <laughs> so I think I'm lagging slightly. My video is trying oh, to catch sorry. up as well. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, we won't go too much into this. Again, we're um, around the booth, or if you've got questions, drop them into the chat. Um, but yeah, as you can see there, it lets you manage your resources so much easier, all from the, um, either from a command line or from a uh, web interface. So it's pretty cool. Totally. And Last at the end, yeah. oh, sorry, just going to say, uh, coming up at the end, we've got some ways that you can get hands on with it with, um, totally. yeah, via a browser. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, yeah, the last thing I want to be doing is maintaining and configuring all my code. I want to be developing it or de deploying it in, even in operation. So OpenShift kind of allows that. Right, um, more code. So, <laughs> right, more code, exactly what I love to do. So projects, which are known as namespaces in Kubernetes, are able to isolate and separate teams from one another, which they're also commonly used to create different environments of a given application, as you can see kind of here with the payment. Um, and again, APIs allow you to route into different projects super easily. So it, um, yeah, it really enables that innovation that we want to do. Plus the, like we we're talking about the security side of things. So, and particularly important for things like PCI compliance and whatnot, like you can actually have particular policies, quotas, limits, um, any sort of um, control in the environment to help make it um, more secure, more safe. And yeah, at the end of the day, devs are able to get hands on and deploy stuff quicker, easier. Like then it's just about writing the code, not about like fixing the engine. <laughs> exactly. Hail to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the CI and CD pipeline is important. Um, so the continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline, also known as DevOps, which this is an automated process. And as you can see here, um, OpenShift has it all set up uh, pretty much for you. Um, it's an automated process that drives the software through a path of building, testing, and deploying code. And by automating this process, the objective is minimizing that human error and maintaining a consistent process. So you always end up with the same environment, like, which is great. Uh, and OpenShift also makes sure that Jenkins or CICD or whatever CICD platform you're using runs first time every time. No, I'm only joking. You still got to deal with that one. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, um, I, I wish. Um, but, one of the other things, and we're not going to, we don't have it, we're not talking about it in the deck, but please come see us, is um, AI Ops, which is amazingly cool as well. So um, this is being talked about for a number of years. Uh, IBM's launched it this year too. So, And what that does is basically help automate uh, log and um, anomaly detection. Like it looks at all your logging for you and sort of tells you things that might be of interest. It learns from your stack, which is amazingly cool. So yeah, anyway, super excited about that one. it is cool. Come, <laughs> come talk to us about that one. <laughs> Definitely. So even now we're almost at the DevSecOps stage and then we're going into AIOps, which is, which is pretty cool. I uh, love yeah. it. Yeah. But CSCD um, is really cool because, um, sorry, I was going to transition to the next slide. Yeah, <laughs> um, CSCD is really cool because when it works, like it's, um, I'm a lazy dev and like you can Me deploy too. code super quick and easy. Yeah. You spend more time, um, Worst thing ever, like deploying before the days of CACD, deploying an app into production only to find that the environment is just that slight bit different. And that and thing that you thought would work doesn't work. Yeah, and it's always a Friday night, isn't it? And then you're spending all oh, the weekend always. fixing the bugs. <laughs> it's like, no. Wait, quick, quick scene change, because yeah, deployments on a Friday afternoon, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I love that scene. Uh, anyway, so as we were saying, sorry, one of the great tools that's uh, come out these days for CRCD pipeline is Tekton. So Tekton um, came out of a Knative project, so Kubernetes native project, and it's now um, been taken out of that open source project and is its own open source project. Um, it's 
it provides Kubernetes style resources for the ICD concepts. And it's becoming super popular. Uh, Steve, did you have anything to? So, what is Tecton, Steve? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tecton is, I was taking a photo. <laughs> Tecton is an open source project that provides, it's an open source project, which is amazing because open source, we love open source. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, built on um, uh, Knative. So it's basically built for Kubernetes, which is really, really cool, but it makes it easier to deploy across multiple cloud. Again, multi-cloud, amazing. I love multi-cloud, yeah. so flexible. Um, at all hybrid environments. Um, these resources are naturally described in YAML, which again, like big fan of YAML. Anyone, I think anyone that's built out an API before has pretty much used YAML. I would hope they have. Anyway, uh, and store co in a code repository. These pipeline as code approach pro pro approaches provides the benefits of versioning and uh, source control. So it's really cool. Yeah, it's it's a build once, run anywhere kind of containerized pipeline, which is which is what's so great about it. Also, really love the logo. <laughs> it does have a fun logo. I wish it we does. could give stickers out for it. You I know, that'd be stickers. great. Sticker for everyone, <laughs> virtual stickers. <laughs> um, so some cultural change considerations um, when with cloud native as well. So smaller teams because of your microservices um, with broader scope, um, which really allows developers to shine um, and come up with great ideas. Um, it's top-down support with bottom-up execution. Um, teams own all the metrics related to operations and development. So you've really got that collaboration of DevOps going here. They're not fighting each other. Um, so that builds trust as well. Um, and you can integrate with other teams also helps with your trust uh, culture in business. And sorry, Steve. I was going to say, I was waiting for, waiting for you to finish that bit. Yep. But, um, the, um, yeah, and this is equally as important as the systems itself. And ideally, like once you start going on this cloud native journey, if you haven't already, but I'm sure many of you, many of you have, but um, is to bring these teams along with you. So even if it's just one or two people from each team, like to get them across it and get them familiar with the concepts, with the reasons why, get them hands on with it. It's really easy. Actually, we're about to give you some special resources for this, but it's really <laughs> easy to get. Get hands on. We are spotless. Um, we, I, I read the script earlier, so. Um, <laughs> Did you? Weird, okay. considering you only realised it was on a second ago. No jokes. Uh, so, um, but yeah, you're right. Cultures only change when people um, change, and the business processes change as well. Um, but this tech really allows you to change that culture. Mm. Um, so, further reading the exciting part. So. As Dev Steve alluded to before, you can learn OpenShift from a browser, which is super cool. No setup, no nothing. You just log onto a browser, hit play base, openshift.com, um, and there you go with a full OpenShift environment. And these tutorials that you get hands on with the CIA, C, uh, sorry, with the um, command line, and also the web portal at the same time. So you can do the command line side of it, uh, read the tutorial, do the command line, and then see the changes being made in the web console or the reverse. Totally. You can actually yeah. do the web console and then see it in CI. Anyway. Yeah, it's great. Um, well, cloud approach. <laughs> so OpenShift's Labs Immersive as well, developer.ibm slash openslabs slash OpenShift. Um, there's some um, awesome labs on there that you can go through and learn all about, you know, your DevOps principles, your OpenShift containerization, all those sort of things. So they are a good thing. Also, IBM and Red Hat have just opened the Maker, Maker Space, is it? Not Maker Space. Um, what was that? Yes, that's Mo the one. Mo multi cloud marketplace. Ooh, exactly. <laughs> that's the one. Um, I'm getting confused with my M word. <laughs> the um, yeah, the immersive labs kind of go more in depth um, as a process approach rather than the last uh, link we showed you or last hands-on tutorial we showed you, which goes more granular in sections. So, I mean, great way to um, get more in depth from a process point of view rather than a granular here's what each thing is point of view. So, but if whichever way you want to use, you're still going to learn OpenShift. Exactly. 
Um, and another great way to learn OpenShift is by building projects. And I know you love a good Node Red open source um, I project, Steve. <laughs> do love a really good Node Red project. Um, I, I, anyone that hasn't used Node Red before, this is a great, great time to be able to get hands on with it. Um, we're actually about to give you a special VIP link too. So um, the thing I like most about this, uh, particularly in the cloud native context, is it also creates automatically creates your CICD um, for you to play around with as well. So it deploys Node Red automatically from our catalog on the free tier, um, and then yeah, you can you can play around with deployments, rechecking code, so you can still edit everything. Um, there's a GitHub repo that kind of uh, creates in the back end that you can pull down and then push up changes, and it redeploys, et cetera, et cetera. It is so easy. Um, it is. It's and super easy. You don't need to know how to code even to do this. It's awesome. <laughs> we. Now we have this very special link, don't we, Ali, for um, we all the do. participants. So uh, grab a screenshot of this link. It's it's it right there. It is it right there. Yeah, anyway, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, if you grab that link and head over and uh, put it into a browser, then you can sign up for the cloud and get some super special VIP um, access and you are totally worthy. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Uh, we hope you enjoyed that and learnt something out of it. Um, as always, please remember, be excellent to each other. Tech for good. Yeah, totally. Uh, and thank you all for joining us. Totally. Um, and yeah, exactly. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, <laughs> did anyone have any questions? We'll round out with that. Makes us very API. <laughs> <laughs> oh, virtual space. It is. That is pretty I did, good. I did have a background before I was going to come live from, uh, but we didn't work. <laughs> oh, uh, so maybe, that was a good story. Maybe, maybe your background is a background. It is. I'm not really here. <laughs> That's usually what I say when my green screen doesn't work. I just say maybe it's a green screen background. <laughs> oh. I mean, I love a good green screen. It's good for the mood, right? No. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can make those slides available. Definitely, Helena. Um, we'll chat with the API days people about how we do that. Otherwise, yeah, hit us up in the chat and we'll be able to send them through to you otherwise also. Totally can. Um, also, yeah. come say hi on the booth. Cool, we'll be hanging out in the booth after this session. So that geek it out a bit. <laughs> totally cool. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we appreciate you joining. Enjoy API days. Um, Developer Steve is going to be around doing a couple of other chats as well. I believe you're doing a roundtable with Michelle Howey from Telstra Dev in the next few days. So uh, looking forward tomorrow, to yes. hearing about tomorrow, is it? All things yes. IoT. So that will be a fun one to join. Um, check out Ben Deckerai's um, challenge as well. I'm going to check it out after this. Um, lots of fun things happening and be excellent to each other. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.